My name is Adrian Roberts. In 1966, I was a lieutenant commanding 3 Troop 1 APC squadron in South Vietnam. And there's a lesson here for practicing officers that if you become engaged in killing the enemy, and by that I mean sitting behind a 50 caliber, hitting the other fellow as I was, you can in fact uh, become so absorbed by that uh, activity as to briefly pause uh, to lose sight of your command function. To that end, uh, I no longer subscribe to, at least in APCs and the like, to the commander being involved behind a gun because I uh, do not believe that uh, he's effective in that role. And I might add the South Vietnamese Army for what it's worth. I subsequently learnt don't practice that either. The other thing is that uh, to try and give you some impression of what it's like, you, you're not frightened, you're totally absorbed in what you're doing and images float up like still pictures. You're not even conscious of killing other human beings. You, it's just like a series of still, still pictures. And uh, I can only describe the fire that came at us at, as being, uh, well, something that was quite outside of my experience. The, I do remember sitting in the, t in the top of this thing and most of the other crew commanders remembered the same sensation of watching the trace so it seems somehow to drift towards you and, and explode in white puffs against the trees. And I, I have always thought that they fired high because we kept on moving into them. That's really all that saved us from a bit of a catastrophe. We drove into this stuff and all the time they kept firing high. But the trace seemed to weave up at you and you had this quite strange sensation that you could weave from side to side and dodge it, which was quite absurd if you think about velocities. But that was, that was the impression. Now what I'm going to tell you now is to try and convey to you the way it was. It had rained, as you'll remember. We went back into the area, and the first bodies that we came across were, uh, were three men, and they had no boots on. And I tell you this story because it brings home the difficulty of telling who's who. We were dreadfully upset when we saw from the top of these carrier the three bodies without any boots on, because we thought they were our own chaps. And it wasn't until we got out on the ground that we discovered it was a 60mm mortar crew. Uh, who in fact had been killed by artillery fire without being macabre, uh, one chap's brain was out neatly on alongside his head. Um, we then continued on and the most amazing sight, there was an Australian infantry soldier leaning against a tree um, in, in a state of shock. He was a, a left behind fellow from the, uh, the platoon that had been the missing platoon of D Company. Um, I didn't actually speak to him, but he was just simply leaning up against the tree. I understand the Vietnamese had tried to take his boots off him and he told them to F off and uh, they had and not, not uh, touched him. Uh, anyway, he survived, but he was uh, in quite a state of shock. And uh, because it had rained, all the blood and stuff had gone and they were, they were lying in a straight line as if they were asleep. Um, the enemy were... Well, there was a wheeled machine gun, which was perhaps about from here to the end of the room, which is, what, uh, 40, 50 feet, perhaps, from this line. The platoon commander was lying out to the right, about 20 yards, I suppose, over there, dead, with an AK-47 in his hands, as I remember. His uh, SLR, I think it was, had run out of ammunition. The, uh, the line of the other soldiers, they were lying in fairly clean undergrowth under the rubber, uh, in, in a straight line. Um, one of them was still alive, um, second from the left, as I remember, with, but with gas gangrene. Many of them uh, had been shot uh, through the head. The, one of the difficulties that is worth noting at that point in time was that when people came to take the weapons from the soldiers, the, the dead soldiers, they still had rounds up the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the chamber and I al almost saw one of the uh, A Company infantry soldiers, uh, D Company infantry soldiers dispatched by a lad who was dead but hand still on the weapon and it went off. Much the same as the uh, clearing of the foreign weapons, the same difficulty. Um, I can't sort of uh, explain to you how it was. It was like totally hushed and terribly depressing, terribly quiet. Some four weeks later, we were in that same area and found uh, decomposing uh, people that had been missed on the, on, on the clearance. I vividly remember that because I was quite ill. Uh, much to the amusement of my driver, Piggy O'Rourke, who was less sensitive. Um, 
think he only said, uh, and macabre climax was that the ca carrier that carried the dead out was, uh, when the floorboards were lifted, it was full of blood. And um, we could never quite get into that thing without smelling it. Sorry. Um, and that was the uh, that was the end of the battle. Oh, I'm sorry. Must be getting old. There's me in me slouch hat with me SLR and greens. God help me. I was only 19. From Vungtel, riding Chinooks to the dust at New Edad. I'd been in and out of choppers now for months.